This conference will now be recorded. Hi everybody, Professor George here. I am doing a short video tutorial on how to use your Cengage platform to read your textbook and to do your homework. It's really important that you feel very confident in accessing all of your materials right from the beginning so that you know what's due when. My class has a lot of assignments. Each assignment is not too long, but I do have a lot of assignments. I do that to try to help you understand the material, particularly when you don't get me in the classroom. So I am going to teach you how to understand the Cengage platform and how to do your homework. I'm going to switch around now and share my screen with you. Okay, so this is what you get when you have your textbook. Make sure that you did it with your course code from me. Things might look slightly different up here because you're a student and not a professor, but it won't be that much different. The very first thing that you want to do when you get in here is hit expand all. I know that sounds like maybe overkill, but trust me, because this um, textbook, it's sometimes kind of hide your assignments. So if you hit expand all right at the beginning, you'll be able to see how to get to things. The very first thing that I want you to do, I'm not gonna focus too much on the due dates because the due dates could be different for different classes. This is kind of a generic um, tutorial for different classes. But the first thing you're gonna do right off the bat, these will be counted as homeworks. It says required and a due date. This says practice, but it's not practice, it's required. So you're gonna click on those and you're gonna do your homework. But first, that's like that's like how to get around in MindTap, how, very short videos. Now, part one and chapter one. Now, this is very important. Again, it's a small thing, but it will make a big difference. If you look in some of your classes, your professors might have shown you how you can, um, I don't know if you can see my pointer, how you can get to the textbook over here, that blue book. That is not a good way to look at the textbook. The best way to look at the textbook is here, where you see it inside of the course. You see a little book there, and requirement, read chapter one in the eighth book. I'm gonna click on that, and that's gonna bring up our textbook. Now, I know that a lot of you, or maybe some of you, I don't know, um, students have gotten in the habit of not reading their book as much. Economics is pretty hard. It's not as intuitive as some subjects. It's harder to kind of bullshit with economics. It's a very precise science. So you kind of got to give into it and read the textbook. Now, the good news is I got a textbook this year that I think is easier to read than a lot of books in the past. Um, let me some, show you some of the functionality of this particular textbook um, that I hope will help. So what is economics? You have like the chapter contents there. Um, so if you go in this way, you have the ability to highlight and then highlight it. You can add a note and say like, this was really good. You could add a flashcard, like this is something she wants me to remember. So you can highlight your book. Everything that you highlight over here where it says Study Hub, when you click on that, it'll show you your highlights and your notes. This is my book. I think I probably have some in here. Um, you might be able to see mine. I'm not sure, but I did start highlighting a while ago. So you can make highlights in the book. You can bookmark where you are. You can take these and make them into flashcards. So highlighting can be very helpful. So when you're wanting to look for something, it's not as hard. One of the features that I like the very best in this book is this right here. It's a read feature. Um, my daughter has pretty bad ADHD. And if she tried to read a textbook, I shouldn't use her as an example, anybody, 
try to read a textbook, especially something like economics, you can kind of space out, fall asleep, zone out pretty quickly. Um, this is a good feature for people who have trouble concentrating or just really need to have help reading. So if you put on the read, I don't know if you can hear that. I don't think you can. Hold on. <laughs> he wants to cry. So I don't think that you can hear this, but I want you to see that the thing I like about it is as it reads it, it kind of goes along with it. So if you have a lot of trouble reading this, if you listen to it and watch them read it, I have found for students who have trouble focusing, it's the best, and I've read about it, it's the best way if you listen and then watch it read it to you. Um, and then if you really get into it, you can see this person over here, you can change, you can change how fast, never go to fast, it'll make you crazy. But you can change, you want a British person, I mean, Australian person or United States person, a man or a woman, you can have it read to you at different speeds with different accents. I just think that's a really good feature. And I know I really want you to read the book. If you don't, um, you know, the least you could do is when you're eating your breakfast in the morning, just sit here and let it read it to you while you're drink, eating your cereal or eating your sandwich. You know, just have them read it to you. You reading it and taking notes is best, but this is better than not reading it. All right. So read your home, read the text, listen to the text. Um, homework is always going to be due. Most everything besides the discussion board is due on Sunday nights. But if you can listen to this or read the text on Monday, Monday or Tuesday, you're going to be sitting so much better to answer your discussion board questions, to do the homework and send gauge. You're going to be doing a lot better. So I really want to encourage you um, to read the chapter or have it read to you. So that's always going to be the first thing. The things with the orange dots on them, besides the getting started, but for the rest of the course, the things with the orange dots are the ones that are considered your homework. In coursework, it'll say chapter one, homework and send gauge. That's what this is, okay? Uh, chapter two, homework and send gauge. There's two of them this chapter. Chapters, almost always one. Chapter three, homework and send gauge. Chapter four, homework and send gauge. I already have all the dates in there and all of it's there ready for you to do. Now let me tell you about how to do this the best way to be the most successful in this class. When you click the homework, you see that you have three attempts. You have three attempts at doing this homework. So when you click on this, I'm not going to read all that, but you're going to read all of that. You see, I'm very nice. <laughs> I like to think I'm very nice because I keep the highest score. So you do this three times. This one's only worth one point. But in general, if you got 0.5 the first time and 0.5 the second time, if you get one on the third try, I will give you the one. I don't average the grades. That's the default is to average them. But I give you your highest one. So you're going to go down here. Uh, and I'm gonna do, where you go? I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna answer these and I'm gonna answer these wrong. I'm just randomly clicking numbers. I might get it right just randomly clicking it, but probably not. Now here's where I want you to hear me. If you've fallen asleep, listen up to this. What you wanna hit right here is not save and continue. And it's not continue without saving. What you always wanna hit is great now. So you see here, I got zero out of one. So maybe you didn't spend a long time looking at the PowerPoints, you're reading the book on this section, you just kind of tried to wing it. Well, you're ringing it didn't work. Now here, this explanation, I would get out your paper and pencil and write down monetary cost plus opportunity cost equals, you know, write down little notes on what they said, and then you're going to try another version. You're going to try another version and you're going to use your notes that you just wrote down. 
Now, if you try another version and you grade it now and you still get zero, I wouldn't try it again. I would copy this whole thing, put it into a Word document, and then look it up. Spend some time looking it up or email me or email somebody else in the class. Um, the, the homework is 20% of your grade and my goal is that everybody gets 100 on the homework because you get three tries at this and I'll keep your highest grade. So some weeks you have three questions, some weeks you have more. So answer each question, start, start these on Monday or Tuesday so that when I'm lecturing, but don't go to the third try until you've read the book, heard the lecture, done something. You wanna always get these, uh, Sometimes I see people who get like C's on their homework and they didn't even try the second time. That's really making a mistake because this class gets harder and harder and harder. Sorry, but it just does. So what I would do is always um, try to get an A on your homework. So once you've answered all these questions and then you continue and I got that one right, yay me. I'm gonna continue and I got that one right at the end. I'm going to continue and then I'm done, break my assignment. I'm not going to do that, but that's what you're going to do when you're done. It'll automatically do that at the due date if you haven't finished it. So those are your assignments. Now, one thing you got to know is that the gradebook here does not link with the gradebook in my Warren. So I have to physically take your grades from here and put them in my Warren. So if you finish this and you got an A and you go on to my warn and there's no grade, it's just because I haven't gotten to it yet. I'll get to it as fast as I can. So in each chapter, there's going to be other things besides your required homework. The required textbook and the required homework is what you need to focus on. These practice tests are great. You go into the practice test and you say, I'm going to test for chapter one, or you could do it for more. You can select how many questions you want. You want 10. There's 40 available to you. You're going to take the test. The thing I like about this so much is, um, I'm just randomly answering these. The thing that's so nice about this is that, um, I'm trying just, everybody's got an A. The thing that's so great about the test prep, which is not assigned, which is not something you have to do. And you hit review, I want to submit it even though I didn't finish it. What I, oh look, <laughs> a whole bunch of them are right, just clicked an A. But here's what's good is if you get the wrong answer, not only does it give you why it's wrong, but it, if you click on the e-reader, it takes you right to the section of the book that dealt with that question, which is a very nice feature. I wish it did that in your homework. So just to review, this is your this is your textbook. This is your online platform. You're always going to hit expand all. You're going to go to each chapter. You're going to read the book where you have that little book. You can make highlights. Um, you can do all that stuff. Your assigned homework is this one with the orange dot. You're going to do that. Um, you can do the test prep, you can look at their flashcards, but each week you have the same sort of thing. Now let me show you how that, so that's our book. That's our book. Now if you go back to our coursework, you see here for week one, it says chapter one homework in Cengage. That was the one I just showed you. You go down here to week two, chapter two homework in Cengage, and chapter two homework math and graphing tutorial, and those are your due dates. I hope this has made it easier for you to think about doing your homework in Cengage. I know at the beginning of the semester, especially when you have a lot of courses, sometimes um, everybody does a little different, it can be confusing. So there you have it. That is how you get into your Cengage textbook and how you do your Cengage homework. As always, any questions, let me know.